I'm just going to talk very, very briefly about what this looks like for this month and why. And then um, we'll go from there and talk about consciousness and creation because this is basically what Taurus is all about. As most of you know that are on the call right now, um, this figure right here, Taurus, was Gugulana. He was a servant of the supreme celestial deity An or Anu. An was the Sumerian version. Anu was the Babylonian version. They're the same deity, basically. So um, there's a few different things going on in here. We have the Pallades over here, which were Mars, as we're told in the uh, Assyrian record. And we also have Alderbaran, which is the bull's jaw um, or the crown of Anu. Either way, we have strong Mercury associations in here without going into all of the detail, which, as you guys know, is a whole big conversation. Uh, Adad was a storm god, and he was called the heavenly bull. Um, he was the fertile rain, and he would obviously water and semen. They saw that as being the creative power and source through, you know, throughout the universe. And so when the water fell to the earth, it would fertilize the land, and we would have, you know, all of this vegetation and life and crops and just wonderful things, you know. And so when the heavenly bull was brought down to earth by Inanna or Ishtar to wreak havoc on Gilgamesh's city, uh, Uruk, he consumed all of that same vegetation, all of the water, all of the fertile properties. So we have this very strong drive in the constellation of Taurus to consume. And it's not just to consume food. It's not this gluttonous decadence uh, that we see sometimes in classical astrology where we have a Venus association and thus it being very superficial, materialistic, and we just want to buy, we just want to shop and eat dirt or <laughs> eat dirt, eat desserts and, <laughs> and be lazy and kind of, uh, you know, just superficial and materialistic decadent. Um, it's much more about consuming um, from this higher spiritual drive in specifically consuming the creative process, all of the the things that are produced from the land and this union between the earth and the fertile waters. So it ends up being very cognitive. And these things are all going to be, and they usually are, you know, anytime that we have our new moon here, or we have a lot of planets in Taurus, we're going to get an increase in curiosity. Um, sometimes this can be destructive if we are kind of already stressed out. Sometimes it can kick our brain into high gear and we just become like our mind becomes very overactive. Now, some of this will be a little bit more emotional with Jupiter, uh, Jupiter's conjunction with the moon and Mercury all at the same time, very, very close to the Pleiades. It is going to bring in some of the more emotional Mars type of energy that we get in the Pleiades. So it's kind of... Um, it, it might be a mess depending on what everybody has going on in their personal chart. It could be, a, it could be a disastrous month as far as more of the internal stuff, but it's not necessarily, um, it's not bad. It's clearing the path for a new time, a new season and like new things to come in. So look at any negative things that you have coming up this month or going on this month. So don't take it too hard you know too personally just understand that this is a part of the overall creative process sometimes we got to go in we got to plow the fields so we can plant something new and create um but additionally this connection to honor the supreme celestial god uh brings us to the whole concept of consciousness overall now i could and you guys know i could give entire lectures about <laughs> Uh, what, you know, these different deities did, what they're, what the ancient people actually thought and believed and felt based on the knowledge that they left behind. Uh, but they were much more philosophical than modern scholars would want us to believe. They want us to be very mechanistic and cold and calculating, and that's not really uh, what was going on. So Jupiter here is going to heighten um, some of our cognitive power, but it's also going to balance some of this out, and all of it's going to end up um, tuning us into this higher level. And with Venus and the Sun, uh, being conjunct up here too. Obviously, you're not going to see Venus in the sky for quite some time because they're conjunct. Um, but this is going to, these two were celestial twins. The sun was Utu and his sister was Venus. And um, they loved each other very, very much. So some of the more emotional stuff that we can get, some of the more negative emotional things that come from Venus, the, the wild ups and downs and mood swings, um, the sun's really going to temper that. So overall, it should be a very, for, you know, generally speaking for most people, it should be a very positive month. But like I said, if you're Life is kind of, um, if you're restructuring things right now, it could be a little chaotic, but don't 
don't think it's going to last. It's not going to be like that. This is just a natural part of the whole process. 